Hello and welcome back again to Introduction to VertX. Um, in our last video we talked about using the VertX configuration modules to load our configuration. If you were with us for that session you'll have seen that we used a configuration store option, config retriever option, config retriever, so on and so forth. And what I've done between since then and now I factored this out into a separate method so that I could unclutter this start method for us today to talk a little bit more about routing and how that's handled in Vertex. So one aspect of routes in Vertex that I find particularly useful is the fact that they can be chained. So for example, let's say we wanted to implement some sort of simple authentication mechanism for all of our routes all of our uh, requests going through this web server. We could simply say router.route and leave the path blank and we could say handler and we're again going to get that routing context object that we discussed before and we could simply say something along the lines of cdx uh, ctx request dot get header auth token for example and we could store that in a string auth token and we can compare if my super secret auth token content equals auth token then we can just say context dot next and this says okay you've passed this level of my router I'm going to pass you on to the next closest matching route. And what we could do is if our token check fails, we could say context.response dot uh, set status code is what 401 unauthorized uh, set status message unauthorized end. So anytime we make a request to this REST API and we use the my super secret auth token, it will be allowed through to these other routes that happen after. And these are chained in order that they're added to the router by default. You can also add additional parameters when you specify the routes or the verbs uh, to specify which order they're in, but it's much easier typically to just put them in the correct order and then they read normally and uh, idiomatically to a person who's trying to understand your code. So that's actually kind of interesting. Now, how do we handle static resources. Let's say we wanted to just serve up, uh, if we create a new folder in here and we'll call it web and in this web we create an index.html and we just create html head hello static content. You know, you can't put the title without a title tag. <laughs> You can see how much I actually write HTML. And finish up the head and add a body. And we'll put an H1 hello vertex static content uh, H1 body. Okay, really simple, dirty, plain old HTML. So how would we serve this up? Well, in Vertex, what I generally recommend is at the 
end of your defined routes, you would go router dot route dot handler static handler dot create and the root of our static content is web. So now anything that passes through these and either gets passed on via next or doesn't match one of the routes above is going to be handled by static content in this web directory. And if it doesn't exist in any of these routes and it doesn't exist in the web directory, you'll get a typical 404 not found error, no special handling required. Let's see how this works out for us. So let's do maven clean uh, compile vertex run. Boom, there's that. I'm going to open up a separate terminal and I'm going to do a curl uh, dash x. No, I don't need dash. I need dash h auth token my super secret auth token htv colon slash slash localhost colon 8080 forward slash API v1 hello and we see that we get hello vertex world now let's try this again without the auth token internal server error hmm that's interesting so I wonder what I did wrong there but get header off token. Oh, I know what I did. This is a null response, so I need to if auth token equal equal or not equal. null and that's probably why and so now see you get nothing we can do curl vvv and we see 401 unauthorized is what we're getting back now let's go back up to our auth token and let's actually look at our at the root of our HTML path, when we make a request and it's authenticated, it passes all the way through to the static handler and we get index.html. Now what if we wanted like index.htm or whatever, we could actually add another method, set index page could be index.htm if we wanted. There's a lot of other options we can put around that static content handler. But that's a, a nice little addition to our Vertex web application and I'll look forward to seeing you at the next video.